Hello there, I'm Vox Machina. Welcome back to my latest updates on my surge inspired do it yourself project, uh, an error rack do it yourself stage sequencer based on the original designs from Surge from 1973. And uh, it has been quite a great and big month for this project and this module. So this last past month, month and a half, I've been testing the third version of the prototype. And it's been quite a ride uh, so far. Somehow I managed to even be able to speak or have spoken with Surge himself. It's just quite amazing. So first of all, I want to thank LB Designs, the current owner of the rights of the original programmer, that uh, for allowing me to continue to share this project as an educational project. And Serge himself, somehow LB Designs led me to talk to Serge himself. And it was just great. Uh, Serge himself just told me the more the merrier. So <laughs> I'm quite happy to be able to continue developing this project and sharing with all of you uh, as an open source project and quite exciting project as well. So if it's your first time here, maybe I recommend that you start with the link below for the first update. But it Either way, today I will also recap a little bit an overview of the functionality of the model and the original designs until my modifications as well, so nothing to worry about as well. So this month I have been working on my updates, which include the vertical sequencing, so the model is now able to interpret three different clock inputs, which can act synchronized with each other or completely, totally apart from each other as well. And I also been testing out the cascader functionality, although I will not be demoing it today because I will have to build another one of these massive projects. So, but for the next update, I'm thinking that I'll be able to share with you more details on this functionality as well. The matrix programmer operates with three individual and independent clock inputs, one for making things move from left to right, another one for making things move from right to left, and finally another one for making things move from top to bottom, completely independent from each other, or they can also work synchronized to one another. Now let's imagine we are entering a clock input to this uh, dedicated input for making things moving from left to right. And with this clock things will start to move from left to right. Uh, a stage will be active. Uh, only a stage can be active at any given moment in time. A stage can also be muted or unmuted down below on the switch. Meaning when the clock input goes through this stage, there won't be a gate output. Uh, the CV is continuously outputting, but a gate output can be muted per stage. And this is the first step to create our first sequence. The original design uh, focused mainly on four stages, but here on this uh, version we can also start to consider these individual four rows as we can see moving them here. They can be moved by passing a clock input to the input that makes things move from top to bottom. So now you can start to imagine why the name matrix comes from, uh, with outputs going out on per stage basis and also per row basis. So now let's start to take a look at our different outputs. Each row has a dedicated CV output, so we have four independent CV outputs. So we have a control voltage output for the first row, a control voltage output for the second row, for the third row, and for the fourth row as well. So now we're using two clocks here, one for moving things from left to right and another one for moving things from top to bottom. So let's go quickly on the outputs and what's happening at every clock input. So CV out for stage 1, 2, 3 and 4 is continuously outputting here on these outputs. At the same time, for each step or stage triggered, we have a pulse output, a gate output for that stage, uh, one for each, uh, 1, 2, 3 and 4. We also have a common gates out, which means that it will trigger a gate output if you manually trigger a stage or if you trigger a stage through one of its input triggers as well. And we have a all pulses out, which will basically trigger a gate output every time a clock put is received. Now we also have two special CV outputs, which is called ABCD output and CDBA output. A the ABCD control voltage output basically will output the current stage versus row selected control voltage 
meaning as we see on this example, we have a 16 step or 16 stage sequencer. This ABCD output will output the current voltage uh, highlighted here as a visual representation. The, the other output is actually outputting uh, the reverse sequence. So you can actually in fact have two uh, 16 step or stage sequencer with this module, as I will demonstrate later on in the video. So now the last part of the panel, we can go quickly as well and then we'll see some audio and video demos just right after this. So on this highlighted region, we have control mechanisms for when the sequence is going from left to right. Uh, on these toggle switches, you can either skip a step or you can actually decide to stop the sequence at this step or you can uh, act as normally as well. So we have four, as you can see, versus two meaning we have four controls for when the sequence is moving from left to right, but you also have separate four controls for when the sequence is moving from right to left. So you can have, for example, having a clock input on both on the left and on the right clocks, uh, moving from left to right and occasionally moving from right to left. And you can have different rules on each step. For example, the step two or the stage two can have a skip rule for when it's moving from left to right. And it, the, it can have a normal active uh, playing status when it's moving in the other direction. So almost there with the theory. So the last uh, inputs, outputs that we have here to look at is a special output that I decided to include in, which is a division by two of the vertical clock that makes things moving from top to bottom. This way you can easily, for example, with a single patch cable, have a two multiplied by eight step sequencers. So two eight step sequencers. And the other input is an input very useful for resetting the vertical clock input. So this way you can actually have either a 4x4 four, four four sequence or a 2x8 sequence or 1x16 or even 2x16 sequencer and everything in between. This last switch here is something that I'll be testing upon the other upcoming version but I can tell you for now that it's a switch that allows automatic cascading to one exact model such as this. So uh, in theory you can actually extend this infinitely and you can have sequencers cascading onto each other at the hands of a switch on the front panel so we can actually use it also as a performance uh, tool uh, I'll be testing this more uh, in details on the breadboard for now but I have to build a second one of these to show you the test so for the next update I'll be having two of these and some more upcoming news as well so to make it simple we're gonna start with a simple cock that will start moving things from left to right as you can see now, the sequencer is running. Let's start to open the sound of the oscillator so that we can get a grip of what's going on. So I'm using Krapau, which is a low pass gate here. So I'll start by pulling out the all gates output, which as you know, will trigger a gate output every time there's a clock input and goes through each stage, unless that stage is muted. If it's muted, it won't trigger an output. So here we will use it as a kind of a small quick gate to open the low pass gate. So we're going to try to build a 4x4 sequencer. I'll use the first CV out to start sequencing the oscillator on the volt per octave input. So here I'm just playing with the switches, with the toggles, so you can see I'm skipping some steps once in a while. So let's start using the CV out tool now. I'm going to use it to modulate a little bit the opening of the cutoff of the low pass gate. As you can see, it opens a little bit more once in a while. So let's start preparing the second oscillator that I have here. I'll just connect it first and then we're gonna make use of the third CV out as well. So let's use that 
third CV out to control the pitch of this second oscillator. And just out of fun, you know, let's use the four CV out. I'm gonna insert it uh, just a little bit into the frequency modulation of the second oscillator. So there we go, this is a very simple, simple but can create quite complex uh, output, a simple let's say 4x4 four four step sequencer and this is like I would say the most basic case for this module. So now that we see the simple 4x4, four four, let's try to do a 2 8 step sequencer. So here I go starting with the all gates output again to trigger opening the cutoff on the low pass gate. Uh, but now we'll start uh, by using also the vertical clock input. Actually I'm using a clock, a master and a sequence out dividers to elevate the sequencer a little bit here. I'm using these fantastic models by Siam Modular. You can check them out on siammodel.com. I will also leave a link below. Uh, quite very useful 2 HP clock dividers, odd and even, that take this sequencer totally to the next level. So here I passed an input to uh, reset the vertical clocking. So now we have an uh, eight step sequencer. But if you remember on the DCBA output, we have the second sequencer here as well. So in fact, we have two eight step sequencers. So let's start by sequencing the first oscillator. start opening up the second oscillator and we're going to use the reverse sequencer output to sequence the second oscillator. And these two 8-step sequencer are completely independent from each other, meaning one is using the first and the second rows and the other one is using the third and the fourth rows to output the CV separately. Uh, since we have still continuously in the 4 CV outputs uh, per row, let's try to modulate something else with these outputs as well. So let's, I always love to modulate the envelope on the low pass gate. So now let's take it to the next level. Let's try to create a 16 step sequence. So I'm gonna take out the vertical uh, reset and by default it will just reset at the end of the vertical output. So now we have a 16 step sequence as you can hear. So this is quite fun, but we can actually have another 16 step sequence. Let's pass that CV output to the second oscillator. And this sequence will be the reverse sequence of the first one. So as you can hear, we have two 16-step sequence completely uh, separated from each other. So I'm just going to start to take out all of the clocks to see how you can also play in different ways. Actually here I'm just using the vertical clock and I'll trigger manually. You can also trigger by the trigger inputs for each stage. So you can think of this as presets. I'm just gonna take out the vertical clock now. And I'm just gonna play manually a little bit. Here I'm using, still using the all gates output. 
so it means that it's not affecting at all the cutoff. So let's change that to the common gate output, which will trigger a gate every time I click the key. So you can play this and think of it as a kind of a keyboard. And you can still use all the different CV outputs as before. So next steps for me will be to finishing up or uh, solving some issues that I had, that I have, but I actually solved them here with a couple of hacking in the background on the circuit itself, uh, which we cannot see in the video, but uh, I still have to, you know, incorporate these fixes on the design as well, which include a couple of gate triggers in circuits that I'm missing on the vertical clocking. And also there was an issue with the default virtual clocking reset, which by default, if you don't insert any uh, input on the reset input, it will automatically default to reset every four steps of the vertical clocks. So you can get it running straight away from the beginning. And I will also be testing more the cascading feature, which is quite complex, especially without another second model of this available to test. But uh, I'll be working on building two of the new version for the next update. So please do come back. And I also started to think about adding a drop down for the voltage because the control voltage output is quite a big interval. It's from zero to 10 volts as the original was. But I have a little bit of mixed feelings about doing that or no, let's see. Uh, because, you know, what fascinated me in search philosophy of building instruments was that there was no really a hard distinction between audio signals and control voltage signals, which is quite a different uh, part from, uh, from Buchler and from Moog, which is quite special. Uh, Moog, you know, developed special models for different kind of signals. Buchler had different cable system standards and Surge thought that, you know, there are only inputs and outputs. Uh, there's no distinction between audio signals and control voltage signals, which is, you know, it seems quite simple, but it actually opens the doors to a lot of things and complex patching as well. Uh, so I would like to keep this philosophy and concept, especially for this model, as kind of an homage to the original creators and design. But let's see. See you soon. Hope to see you back in the next update. Meanwhile, I'll probably be sharing some more videos on my other do-it-yourself Iraq projects. So stay tuned. See you soon. So now let's start exploring a little bit more above of what we've been exploring so far. I'm gonna start simple again, but then I'm gonna mess up with the clocks, uh, make them not so obvious. I'm gonna use the other clock from right to left. And let's start to introduce some chaos on this machine. love the sound of a FM together with a low pass gate just sounds so organic so I'm gonna continue to jamming and trying to still increasing complexity as we go hope you enjoyed this video uh, please do come back for my next update uh, hopefully with some front panel as well woohoo And in the meanwhile, please come back if you are more interesting to learn more about my other do-it-yourself Eurorack projects. Uh, thanks for coming. See you soon.